Let's talk about my three most favorite watercolor paint brands. What up friends, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. In this one, I wanna share with you my top three, my most favorite watercolor paint brands. Okay, now I'm gonna give a few disclaimers before we get going. First one, I didn't try all of the brands out there. In fact, there are quite a lot of brands I never even tried, okay? So what I'm saying is, here are my top brands from the ones I did try. I can definitely tell you these are great, um, in my opinion, to my taste. Um, and I will also explain why. And just know that I didn't try many of the others out there. For example, I didn't try I didn't try uh, M. Graham or Rembrandt um, and many others. Okay, but from what I did try, these are some of my favorites. Um, that's the first one. Now the second one, again, it's my opinion. So uh, it really depends on what you're after and what you like and what you dislike. Um, and a third disclaimer I would give is just to let you know that like I'm not affiliated with any of them uh, So it's just my opinion really. So anyway, let's get started uh, with the third place Which is in my opinion Windsor Newton now I just want to say that they definitely make quality paints. Okay. I have no complaint about the quality It's just uh, fantastic. I tried a few of them. The first one I got was the Thalo Green. I don't really like the particular uh, color, no matter the brand, regardless of the brand, but I did uh, like the quality. Um, there were a few things that I liked less. Uh, so one thing is just their color selection itself, the, the colors that, that they make, um, the way they look. Um, I didn't like them as much as colors by other brands. They're like their brochure, their selection. Uh, def again, definitely high quality, but I just didn't like the, the colors themselves. And again, it's my opinion. Um, another thing that was a bit hard for me is, was to blend them. For some reason, if I would uh, create a wash and I want to blend the edges, I just found it um, many times a bit hard to create an even transition. I'm not exactly sure why that was, and it could be uh, definitely related to the uh, specific colors I was using um, but this is one aspect that I just didn't really enjoy for some reason with these now I will definitely say again the colors are high quality they're definitely artist grade I could create anything I want with them they're amazing okay and also just as a mini disclaimer the materials don't matter as much I mean if you know what you're doing you can create just with these this kind of set like the Van Gogh you can create anything as well uh, it just makes life a little easier when the paints are a little more high quality. But anyway, this is what places them on my third spot, um, which is good. Like, I really, really think they're great. Just for me, for my particular needs, um, some of them weren't fulfilled. So now on to the second place, which is Daniel Smith. Now, Daniel Smith, there are a few advantages to them, and, and I personally love them. It's my, the palette I use uh, most often when I'm indoors. Uh, mostly Daniel Smith. So one thing I do like about them, and this is as a nice transition from the Windsor Newton one, is the colors themselves. I love the, the way they make their colors and the selection itself. Uh, for example, the set I started with, which was the Essentials one uh, set that has like six uh, pigments, uh, a warm and a cool version of each of the primaries. I just love them. The, um, the Quinacridone Rose and the, the Pyro Scarlet and all of the, the Just they worked really well for me and I found that I can mix a huge variety of colors with them. So this is one aspect I really enjoyed. Second is they just look fantastic. Um, very vibrant, very strong. Um, just really, really good paint. I, I love the way they look. Um, the one thing that bugged me about these, which places them on the second spot, which is still pretty high, um, is that they don't re-wet as easily. Now, this is, of course, it can vary from one color to another, from one paint to another, but for example, uh, many of them, I find that I have to really, uh, really try hard to re-wet. For example, a good example of this is the Burnt Sienna, okay? Um, I just... I tend to find it's not as strong, the pigment isn't as strong. I have to really, really take out a lot of the color um, to get it to be strongly pigmented. Now, of course, if I'll use it directly out of the tube, it won't make uh, as much of a difference, it won't be that big of a problem, but I love to let the paint dry on the palette. Um, and so I, I kind of made a mess of two things, so I'll just, um, just um, reiterate. So one thing is how 
um, how uh, you have to really take a lot of paint sometimes to get a strongly pigmented uh, color. And the second one is how easily they reweight. Okay, so the first one with the concentrated pigment, of course, if you use them out of the tube, it'll be a little different. But as I mentioned just now, um, I personally love to let them dry on the palette. And I know a lot of people do that. And when they dry on the palette, uh, it's just hard to produce a really strong pigment, okay? And of course, it can vary from one to another. For example, the phthalo blue can really produce a strong, strong um, pigment, strong color. Uh, but most of the other ones, not so much for me. Now, second again is how they don't re-wet that easily. Um, so these two issues could be uh, related to one another. Uh, it could be an advantage if you want your paint to be really organized on a palette that you take on the go. But me, I prefer paints that are really softer um, and re-wet easily. Okay, so this is why these are on the second spot, which is still pretty good. These are the ones I will rely on when I don't use my first spot, which is Schminka. Okay, so um, I have to say I just really appreciate the brand itself um, because they sent me quite a lot of paints and we just had a, a good... Um, a good conversation and interaction via email. However, I'm gonna base this solely on the quality of the paint, okay? This is why I didn't mention this as a disclaimer because it has nothing to do with that. Schminka, first off, all of the vibrancy and the, the strong pigment that Daniel Smith has, they definitely have. So they don't lack in any way in that sense. But also they re-wet really easily and they are just so soft. Uh, even when they dry on the palette, you just put, sorry, I moved the tripod a bit. You just put a bit of, uh, a bit of paint, a bit of water on them, sorry. And they just re-wet really, really easily, which I love, okay? I honestly couldn't find many disadvantage, um, many like yeah disadvantages to Schminka, uh, except for one thing. And I will mention this: um, if you plan on filling your palette a lot and taking it with you on the go, some of the paints can take a long time to dry, uh, and some of them like really a long time. For example, I put the Turner's yellow in the palette, and I let it like uh, I allowed it maybe two or three days to dry, and it still hasn't dried. And when I opened the palette, all of the yellow was smeared on top of it, and it really made a big mess with the, um, with the how it closes and opens. It just hit one of those uh, little screws that that allows it to open and close. So. If you're constantly refilling it and and you want the paint to be dry, like really dry, this may be an issue for you. I personally love it and I just find that I can place it uh, upright like this and not, not flip it accidentally and then it will be good, okay? So for me, this is definitely the first spot. Uh, these are my first choice for now. These are the ones I paint with the most for now, but I will definitely say that the Daniel Smith um, and the, the Windsor Newton ones are fantastic as well. For example, one that didn't make the cut to this list is the Sennelier, and I know a lot of people disagree with me on that one, which is perfectly fine. I found two things that really bugged me with the Sennelier. First one is the whole glazing thing. Um, I like to get as much of what I can create, like as much information on the first wash. And with the Sennelier, yeah, they get much more vibrant and the more you glaze and layer, I'm not the type of person that likes too much of glazing, okay? Uh, I prefer to get things done in, in like two or three washes and, and that's it. And I like to see the vibrancy of the paint immediately. And the other thing that kind of annoyed me with Sennelier, the, the artist grade one, not the, not the um, student grade one, which wasn't so good, um, is that they just felt overworked. So for example, I'd lay down a flat wash, just a flat wash, and it would come out so... Um, so overworked, it looked messy for no reason. And this is something that happens with some paints. For example, the Pyro Scarlet and Bright Reds like this one tend to, to have that effect. But with Sennelier, I found this one happens with multiple pigments. So for this reason, it doesn't make my top three. Again, a matter of choice. I know a lot of people love them and swear by them. So um, definitely just my opinion. You're entitled to yours and your experience and whatever you like the most. But anyway, now I want to set aside everything we've talked about and really put all of this video in context uh, because I think that the brand doesn't matter. The quality, even the quality doesn't matter as much, okay? It's, it's important, but it's totally secondary to your hard work and practice and skills. Okay, so if you have good skills, if you can perceive what you're looking at really well, and if you're good at drawing, and if you're good at value matching, and if you're just good at color selection and composition, all of these things does, do not matter. You can produce amazing results using 
this Van Gogh, which is relatively cheap, you can produce good results with um, my Artscape ones that I gave a pretty bad review uh, for. You can just succeed with any kind of color you want. Granted, it will be easier with the better brands, but still, it's so secondary. So if you get any of these three, or even the Sennelier, or even the Cockmans, you'll do good as long as you put in the hard work, the effort, and the daily practice, okay? So I just wanna put all of this video into context because it really doesn't matter as much, okay? But if you are already at a point where you start to feel comfortable and you do wanna upgrade, these are my top three choices. Um, I hope you will consider them. Um, and that's it, let me know about your top maybe one brand or a few brands that you like to use the most. I'm really curious to hear because um, there are many that I haven't tried yet, okay? So I'm just really curious to see what other people find out there. And again, my opinion, I'm really curious to hear yours, so leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube if you still haven't. Um, also follow me on Instagram and Snapchat where I share more daily updates. When I just get new paints, I like to share what they look like, the swatches, some more personal stuff. Um, and this is it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you again in the next one.